why does the order of operations work? And why do we have to do some operations before others? Some people say that, well, it's just convention. You can't prove it. It's like an arbitrary rule made up in math. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think we can prove it, but I think there are some logical reasons why we do math in the order that we do it. Some things, though, are definitely convention. Convention, again, if you're not sure, that just means we do it because this is how we agree. Like, red light means stop, green light means go, and yellow means hurry, hurry, hurry. Like that, right? So before we get into it, let's talk about what is the order of operations again? Remember, PEMDIS is the common acronym that's used, and uh, if you saw one of my other videos, you saw that I didn't like that these two things are distinguished, and the same with these two. Now, in this picture, they're the same color because multiplication and division are the same if you consider division as, you know, multiplication of the reciprocal. Same with addition and subtraction. Those two things are the same as long as you understand that when you're subtracting, what's happening is you're adding a negative integer. So anyway, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, and division from left to right, and then addition and subtraction from left to right. Overall, you don't go from left to right. If the exponent is on the far right and everything else is addition, you have to take care of the exponent first. Otherwise, you'll end up with a wrong total. So let's get started. Now, all of our mathematical operations, all of these guys, all of them are the same thing. You guessed it. They're all forms of counting. Yep, one, two, three, four, five. They're all versions of counting. Addition, like three plus five. Well, three is one, two, three, just like that. Literally three things in five is one, two, three, four, five. And so if you add three plus five, that's one. And then another is two and three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's how it works. Three plus five is eight because this is one, two, three, and that's four, five, six, seven, and eight. Addition is repeated counting. It's kind of a shortcut. This says that uh, we're gonna start where three ends and we're gonna add five more to that. That's what it means. It's just repeated counting. Now, subtraction, I mentioned just a minute ago, subtraction is the same thing. It's just adding a negative integer. That's all, so no different. That's why you can interchange them from left to right without any trouble whatsoever. Hey, do you know though what a cow's favorite type of arithmetic is? It's multiplication. Yep, and they happen to use a, a calculator. I'm sorry, forgive me. Look, three times five, that is different than three plus five, of course, because what multiplication is, is repeated addition. This means I have three of these numbers adding together. So that's five plus five plus five. Each of these fives is five things, and together that makes 15. There are 15 together. That's why three times five is 15. It's three groups of five all adding. Now division, if you consider division to be the same as multiplication, as long as you are multiplying by the reciprocal, division cannot play. Mm -mm, no, same thing, not any different whatsoever. Because again, if we just consider that division is multiplication by the reciprocal, then it has the same properties, you can rearrange it, you can have the commutative property, the associative property, all that kind of stuff, if you do division this way instead of this way. Okay, now exponents are repeated multiplication. But the thing is, you are multiplying by the same number every single time. Just like three times five, you're adding five three times. Well, this is four cubed, so there are four times four times four. There are three fours all multiplying together, but they're all fours. So let's take a look at this to see if we can unpack it. Now what we're doing, I'm trying to show you how all of these operations are related and they're kind of nested in one another. This is a very powerful notation that allows us to write a number that's really big and ugly otherwise. So anyway, like we saw a minute ago, four times four, well that's just four fours added, like this, one, two, three, four, fours. And each of those fours is worth four, you see? And all together, all told, that is 16. So four times four is, of course, 16. Now, what this means is that there are 16 fours all adding. That's what this means right here, 16 fours, all right here, and they're all adding. Now, addition, repeated counting. Each one of those fours is, well, like four little hash marks. So if you were to not use the shortcut and write them all out and you counted them all up, well, all told, that would be 64. Exponents are repeated multiplication. Multiplication is repeated addition. Addition is repeated counting. Yep, that's what it is. 
Now, parentheses is where we get hung up a little bit. Parentheses is 100% just convention. We agree that if we draw a parentheses or a bracket of some sort around something, we've grouped it together, and it means that we have to do that first. Just like a period and at the end of a sentence, a dot means the sentence is over, there's nothing intrinsically meaningful about that dot. We just all agree it means the same thing. That's what convention is. So, I'm about to break the law. I am going to do a problem in violation of the order of operations, and it's going to be right. But I am going to do the problem with respect to what the operations themselves really mean. Because what we're going to see is that the order of operations, well, they kind of make it so you don't have to think about what those operations mean. They structure it for you in a way. So here, let me show you. I'm going to do this problem just straight up left to right. So I've got 3 times 4 squared plus 5. Order of operations says that I should do the exponent first, then multiply, and then add. But I'm going to multiply first. But I'm going to consider that 3 times 4 squared means that there are 3 4 squares all adding together, like this. And then, of course, the 5 at the end. Now, each of those 4 squares is 4 times 4. So I've got 4 times 4 plus 4 times 4 plus 4 times 4, and then plus 5. You see? Okay, so now, next thing, each of these 4 times 4s means, again, I have 4 4s all adding together. And we saw a minute ago that really equals 16, right? But each of those 4 times 4s means 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, and then, of course, our plus 5 at the end. We could write them all out, but, well, I don't want to put that many hash marks on it. That's a whole bunch of them. But do you see how if we address the exponent as repeated multiplication, which is the same as repeated addition, and addition is repeated counting, well, we get the same result. Order of operations, it takes that, that relationship into respect for you. When you follow the order of operations, you are doing exactly that. It's kind of like, well, the different ways of writing math just make it convenient and more powerful. The exponents are the most nested and it contains the most information. Multiplication is next and then addition and then it all goes back to counting. Do you see? So like these nesting dolls right here, the first one, the smallest, the most simple is counting and then housed, that gets housed inside addition. Addition is repeated counting and then, well, multiplications are repeated addition and exponents are repeated multiplication and then we all agree that we can group those things together in ways that we feel is, well, has a higher priority than others. I hope that gives you some insight as to the arithmetic that's going on behind the order of operations, and maybe it will help you when you start exploring things like exponents and, and some of these trickier uh, formulas that you're gonna have to use in math class. If it does, I would really like it if you just click like and leave me a comment down below. Let me know if this was helpful for you. And uh, anyway, Please visit my website, I almost forgot, and I'm on Twitter. You can hit me up if you have questions. I will leave links in the description below. And if this description didn't quite make sense to you, if I haven't quite uncovered why the order of operations works, I gave a really nice write-up, and I will put a link to that in the description below. It has to do with zombie vaccines. Yep, you heard me right. It's uh, zombie vaccines. Anyway, uh, thank you again for watching. Until next time, hope you have a good day.